Hello there. Did you know that Antarctica is quite unique? It's the only continent without a country, government, or indigenous tribes living there. One big reason is that it's super cold, with temperatures as low as minus 89 degrees Celsius. Plus, it's incredibly windy, with snowstorms racing at speeds of 300 km per hour that can even blind you. Even though it might surprise you, Antarctica is super dry and is considered a desert because it gets only about 51 mm of rain. Any rain usually turns into snow before hitting the ground. Antarctica has very little human influence, which makes it pretty special. However, different countries have tried to claim parts of it. France, Norway, Australia, Britain, Chile, Argentina, and New Zealand all say they own different sections of Antarctica. So, is Antarctica really divided among these countries? Let's explore more in today's video. Let's start our story a long time ago, around 350 BC. There was a smart person named Aristotle from Greece. He was one of the first to say that the Earth is shaped like a ball. The Greeks knew about a cold place in the north, which they called Arctos, like a bear. They even named a group of stars in the sky after a bear. Because they thought the Earth was round, they thought the South must also have similar things, but they didn't know what exactly. So they called the unknown southern place Antarctos, kind of the opposite of the bear. This is where we got the word Antarctica from. People didn't visit Antarctica until the 1890s, but long before that, it appeared on maps. Explorers who traveled the world guessed there was land in the south, but they weren't sure what it looked like or how big it was. Back in 1530, French explorers drew Antarctica on a world map, even though they didn't really know much about it. Look at this map. The northern hemisphere is depicted on the left side, and the southern hemisphere on the right side. The largest land mass in the middle of the southern hemisphere was named, it literally meant unknown southern land. Around 200 years after a long time ago, in 1773, a British sailor named James Cook was the first person to go near the bottom part of the earth, close to a place called Antarctica. He saw big chunks of ice floating in the ocean with rocks on them. When he saw these rocks, he thought a place called Southern Land was real. But going closer to Antarctica was really dangerous due to strong winds and icy chunks that could crash into his ship. He believed no one could reach Antarctica, because it was too risky. However, his belief was proven wrong about 50 years later. There's a debate about who actually stepped foot on Antarctica first. Some people claim to be the first, like a British-American captain named John Davis, who got lost and ended up there. The first time we're sure someone landed was in 1895 when a ship from Norway called the Antarctic reached the shores. Some crew members went on a small boat to land. A guy named Karsten Borchgrevink said he got there before the boat and was the first to step on Antarctica. But a man from New Zealand named Alexander argued he was the first to step off the boat to keep it steady. After that, the early 1900s were called the heroic years of Antarctica. Many expeditions happened, and we learned new things about Antarctica. We even discovered that there are plants, like mosses, growing there. After a period of exploration, different countries tried to claim parts of Antarctica between 1908 and 1942. Seven countries claimed sovereignty. Argentina, Australia, Chile, France, New Zealand, Norway, and the United Kingdom. Others, like the USA, Soviet Union, Japan, Sweden, Belgium, and Germany, explored but didn't claim territory. During World War II, Germany even dropped Nazi symbols on Antarctica, claiming land. The USA didn't show much interest until later. In 1924, the U.S. said new land discoveries wouldn't belong to a country until there were permanent settlements. After World War II, countries set up research centers in Antarctica to strengthen their claims. Australia, France, Argentina, and others established bases. Sometimes these were close, hinting at political, not just scientific intentions. Territorial claims overlapped, especially for Chile, UK, and Argentina. The Cold War worried people that conflict could spread to Antarctica. In 1959, countries signed the Antarctic Treaty. It had three points. Peaceful use, scientific investigation freedom, and sharing results. The treaty temporarily suspended claims, but they weren't abolished. Countries still claim land, and the treaty expires in 2048. 
Most countries don't recognize these claims, and the treaty has prevented geopolitics, promoting scientific research. Scientists from different nations collaborate through the International Council of Scientific Unions, sending about 4,500 researchers to Antarctica each year. In 1982, scientist Joseph Farman was in Antarctica, measuring the amount of ozone in the Earth's atmosphere. He noticed a strange reading from his machine that indicated a 40% decrease in ozone compared to normal. He didn't initially believe this drastic drop and thought his machine might be faulty. He also considered that orbiting NASA satellites would have detected such a significant change. So, he went home without much concern. The following year, in 1983, he returned with a new machine and found an even greater decrease in ozone levels. He was puzzled and again thought there must be an issue with the measurements, but he trusted that agencies like NASA would have noticed if something was wrong. He left again. In 1984, Joseph decided to measure ozone levels at a different research station about 1,000 miles away. He discovered that the ozone depletion was even worse at this new location. He realized it was a serious situation and took the evidence to NASA. They confirmed the existence of an ozone hole over Antarctica that was growing rapidly each year. Pictures from NASA's satellites showed that in 1979, everything seemed normal. However, in 1980 and 1981, things started changing, and by 1982, a visible hole had formed. In the years that followed, this hole expanded. The news of the ozone hole caused widespread concern, as if the ozone layer continued to deplete, it would have dire consequences for life on Earth. The ozone layer, located about 15 to 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface, is crucial for protecting us from harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Ozone, with the chemical formula O3, is formed when oxygen molecules are hit by the sun's ultraviolet radiation. This causes oxygen molecules to split into individual oxygen atoms, which then react with other oxygen molecules to form ozone. There's a constant cycle where ozone molecules can break down and reform, known as the Chapman cycle, named after scientist Sidney Chapman, who explained it in 1929. The story highlights how Joseph Farman's persistence and evidence led to the discovery of the ozone hole, a serious environmental issue that could have had devastating effects if not addressed. Antarctica, the southernmost continent on Earth, has long been a subject of fascination and intrigue due to its extreme isolation, harsh climate, and the mysteries that surround it. Here are a few notable Antarctica mysteries. Number 10. Southern Ocean In 2000, the world officially recognized a new ocean, the Southern Ocean. It wraps around Antarctica and is the fourth largest ocean on Earth. It stretches from the southern parts of the Pacific, Indian, and Atlantic Oceans. This huge ocean is really deep, reaching about 7,300 meters deep. That's almost twice as deep as the United States is wide. The Southern Ocean is important because it helps move water around the globe, affecting the planet's climate. One special thing about the Southern Ocean is that it's great at soaking up carbon emissions from human activities. This helps reduce the impact of these emissions on our environment. In fact, this ocean has absorbed a surprising 15% of the carbon emissions we've released into the atmosphere. This makes the Southern Ocean even more interesting to scientists and researchers. Number 9. Singing Ice Imagine a really big sheet of ice in Antarctica called the Ross Ice Shelf. It's like a super large icy platform on the ocean. This ice sheet is the biggest one there, even bigger than France. Now here's the cool part. When the wind blows across the snowy hills on the ice shelf, it makes a kind of spooky melody. This happens because the wind makes the surface of the ice vibrate, like a guitar string. Even though we can't hear these vibrations, scientists have special tools that can listen to them. The scientists didn't know about this melody at first. They actually put these listening tools on the ice shelf to study other things. But guess what? They accidentally discovered this strange song. It's kind of like finding a surprise gift. What's even more interesting is that the song changes depending on what's happening around the ice shelf. When the snow on top melts or when there are big storms that move the snow around, the song changes too. So now, scientists are using this song to understand if the ice shelf is healthy or if it might break. 
It's like the ice shelf is talking to them through this mysterious humming sound. Number 8. Mount Erebus Even though Antarctica is extremely cold, it has some volcanoes, and four of them are on Ross Island. But except for one called Mount Erebus, the others aren't active right now. Mount Erebus has been getting more active in the last 30 years. It's special because it's the southernmost volcano that's still active. The volcano is amazing with its hot magma and old lava lakes that have been boiling for around 1.3 million years. It's really tall, about 3,800 meters high, and is also the second highest volcano in Antarctica. Number 7. McMurdo Dry Valley's deserts are usually thought of as hot and sandy places, but Antarctica is actually the biggest desert on Earth. Most of Antarctica is covered in ice, 99%, and only a small part, 1%, called the McMurdo Dry Valleys has sand dunes. These sand dunes can be huge, up to 70 meters tall and 200 meters wide. The valleys are kind of like Mars in terms of climate, and scientists study them to learn about life on other planets. Sadly, these sand dunes are moving about 1.5 meters every year because of climate change. Scientists are trying to understand them better before they disappear. Number 6. The Giant Hole Back in 1970, a huge hole unexpectedly appeared in Antarctica, confusing scientists. Then, just as strangely, it disappeared. But almost 50 years later, the hole has come back, and it's massive, about nine times the size of New York City. This open area of water is called a polynia. It's like a doorway connecting the sky and the sea. The hole suddenly showed up in the same ice area, growing an amazing 740% bigger before shrinking when the summer ice returned. After a long time of not knowing why this was happening, researchers from New York University have finally figured it out. These strange holes are actually marks left by big storms called cyclones. These storms could have a big impact on the whole world's climate. The big question is, with the Earth getting warmer, will these holes happen more often? The way these holes exchange energy affects the local weather. So, even though this polynia is fascinating, it's also a reminder of how much we still don't understand about nature and how powerful it can be. Number 5. Ancient Meteorites Antarctica is a prime location for meteorite discovery due to its cold, dry conditions that preserve these extraterrestrial rocks. The contrast between dark meteorites and the white ice makes them easier to spot. The East Antarctic, with its stable ice sheet, has seen its top layers eroded by sunlight and wind, exposing older ice layers rich in meteorites. Over 20,000 meteorite samples have been gathered since 1976. In 2013, Japanese and Belgian scientists found a massive 18-kilogram meteorite, the largest in East Antarctica in a quarter century. Their 40-day search yielded 425 meteorites weighing a combined 75 kilograms, including pieces from the asteroid Vesta and a Mars meteorite. Number 4. Ancient Fossils and Rainforests Antarctica is a really old place that has changed a lot over millions of years. Before it turned into a frozen desert due to the Ice Age, it used to be warm with rainforests and maybe even civilizations. People figured this out by finding old wood fossils, signs of trees that like warm weather, and marks of leaves that show there were rainforests in Antarctica. Scientists also found lots of old fossils of sea animals, birds, and dinosaurs from a time called the Cretaceous period. They found small things too, like the old front wings of a type of beetle that lived 14 to 20 million years ago when the climate was warmer. They also found super tiny fossils of one-celled creatures that scientists are still debating about. One super cool discovery is that they found really old sperm cells on the egg case of a worm species that doesn't exist anymore. This is a big deal because scientists think it can tell them new things about how things evolved. Number 3. Antarctic Fungi Antarctica has lots of tiny living things called microorganisms and extremophiles. There's a special kind of fungi there that's different from normal fungi. Normally, fungi like warmth and trees, but this one lives in the super cold weather of Antarctica. It survives by eating old wooden huts that explorers left behind long ago. Scientists also found another kind of fungi in Antarctica. This one eats the oil that leaked from fuel containers explorers left behind. These interesting creatures are being studied to see if they can help clean up big oil spills all around the world. Number 2. Underground Lake Antarctica is covered in thick ice, 
but scientists found underground lakes using radars. About 400 of these lakes exist under three kilometers of ice. They formed after Antarctica split from a big ancient land. The ice on top keeps the lakes from freezing. The largest lake is Lake Vostok, found by Russian scientists. It's 3.5 kilometers under the ice and holds a lot of water. In 2014, scientists found tiny living things in Lake Willens, under a kilometer of ice. These microorganisms use methane and ammonium for energy and have been there for millions of years. Number 1. Ancient Civilization In a remote part of Antarctica, scientists found ancient ruins that have amazed experts. They discovered a massive stone structure and other objects that are around 4,000 years old. This is the first proof of an ancient civilization on Antarctica. The discovery is considered one of the most important archaeological finds of this century. The team, led by geologist Scott Amundsen from Wyoming State University, stumbled upon the remains of a stone building about the size of Rome's old amphitheater. They worked for a month, living off music and snacks, excited about what they would find each day. They have uncovered the foundations of a huge column structure that might have been as tall as 30 meters. Antarctica's very dry air has preserved many artifacts, including coins with penguins and an unknown reptile, peanut shells, stick-like objects resembling baseball bats, and balls made from seal hides. This discovery challenges what we thought about Antarctica, as it was believed that no one had been there until the 1800s. Experts are surprised and amazed by the find. One expert, H.P. Lovelock from the University of Dallas-Fort Worth, finds it hard to believe, while another, Joe Konu from the Southwest Archaeological Institute, thinks this discovery is even better than stories like Noah's Ark or Atlantis. Our journey to Antarctica has been nothing short of awe-inspiring. From its breathtaking landscapes to its unique wildlife and vital scientific research, this frozen continent holds a special place in our understanding of the world. As we conclude our adventure, let's remember to cherish and protect the beauty of Antarctica for generations to come. Thank you for joining us on this incredible voyage to Antarctica. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow explorers. Stay tuned for more exciting adventures, and until next time, keep exploring and keep learning. See you in the next video.